When it comes to classic shows from my childhood, Drake and Josh was one of my favorite go-to shows to watch. Whether they were new episodes or reruns, it didn't matter. I was there. While I personally hold Keenan and Kel a bit higher on my favorite shows list, Drake and Josh felt like the perfect spiritual successor. But let me not get carried away as I'm working on a big Drake and Josh video coming out this year on my other channel. So then, why are we talking about Drake and Josh at all on this channel? Well, yeah, it only means one thing. There's a Drake and Josh video game. Actually make that two things. Things. There's a second Drake and Josh video game. You're welcome, America. I find it honestly extremely funny that in the early 2000s, so many live action TV shows from Nickelodeon or Disney Channel were released as video games. Most times just on handheld devices, like with Drake and Josh for the Game Boy Advance and Drake and Josh Talent Showcase on the DS. Turning sitcoms into reference filled random shovelware games was the norm. And I thought, what could be a better use of my time than playing through and looking back at the Drake and Josh video games? And after after I went over my very easy to make long list of better things to do, I still decided that it was what I truly wanted to do with my life. My therapist bills are getting out of hand. The only two ways you at least had the first game on the GBA was from a relative gifting it to you for your birthday or for a holiday, or you picked up the game from an overcrowded shelf full of copies of Drake and Josh at a Five Below store. I have nightmares of how many sealed copies of Drake and Josh for the Game Boy Advance listed at $5 are still out there somewhere in a random landfill, never getting the chance for the cartridge to see the light of day and bring someone out there pure joy or misery. Probably misery. Anyway, here is the dynamic duo of games starring the dynamic duo of Drake and Josh. So how the heck do you turn a teen sitcom into a video game? It's simple, you don't. But if you do, is Drake and Josh the prime example of what to do? I guess we shall find out today. First, let's start with the Game Boy Advance game simply titled uh, the name of the show. Created by Artificial Mind and Movement, AKA A2M, AKA now known as Behavior Interactive and published by THQ, Drake and Josh was released on the Game Boy Advance on March 13th, 2007. A very late release for the console with the DS already being in full swing for a couple of years. So you'd think that with the Game Boy Advance being around for so long at this point, these late stage releases should be pushing the power of what the GBA can do. And when you turn on the game, you are greeted by Drake and Josh, but as the stylized floating head 2D drawn avatars. Who would even want to be greeted by just a PNG floating head that is a cartoony version of a real life person? Huh. Beats me. Anyway, they exchanged some back and forth like the start of any Drake and Josh episode, as they also laid down a scenario to build off of, with them having to constantly deal with Megan. Progressing from there, the first stop on our adventure is Drake being late for school, where you get to play this semi-top-down stealth mission where you sneak your way Metal Gear Solid style through the school, trying not to get caught by the many teachers or for some reason dozens upon dozens of hall monitors while collecting some collectibles and impressing the ladies with your sick guitar riffs so you can manipulate them to do certain actions to progress your way through the level, like standing on buttons to open a door. Also, the school has the budget for advanced security cameras and all these buttons. My school barely had a security guard. Well, you come to find out, Megan is behind all of this going on in the school, basically turning it into what seems like a prison that you're trying to escape from, navigating all the obstacles in your way, whether it's the library or a classroom or even the girls' room. The girls' room! Wow. That was a real throwback. Sadly, in the game, it just makes you question, why is Drake in here? Anywho, Drake's gameplay is all about sneaking around and not getting caught. For Josh, however, it's slightly different. Going over to his own situations and dealing with Megan, apparently she released some sheep into the school, and it's your responsibility as Josh to clean the sheep out of this mess. You repeatedly run around the school looking for sheep, picking them up one at a time and chucking the poor <laughs> stirred through a doorway, and you keep doing this over and over again. There are so many sheep, it was legit putting me to sleep just trying to catch them. As you go back and forth between playing as Drake or Josh, the levels are really more of the same. Drake sneaks around and stealth-based anything already starts putting me in a sleepy state, and Josh just does tedious things that also test my will to keep my eyes open. As a game, it functionally works fine enough, but as something compelling, that is nowhere to be seen. Not that I was expecting to see that in the first place. Sometimes Josh has to push blocks around and you can pick things up and put them down. It's all puzzle solving. It's not insanely hard and it's very much not that exciting to complete. Your threats in the game are just dudes who hit you and nothing happens aside from you waiting to move after being stunned. The worst that can happen from any op is some interactions will just reset the level for you. That's just annoying. And I very much don't like my progress getting halted. Up next, it's more Drake and Josh. 
Now here's more Drake and Josh. But there are a total of six levels to run through with different segmented points throughout. It's really not a long game at all. If you ignore the collectibles, it'll take you only a couple of hours to beat. If you don't ignore the collectibles, it'll only take you a couple hours to beat. And it truly justifies that $5 price tag from five below. There are a few mini games to play that change things up somewhat from Cafeteria Panic, where you chuck food items to blow up the enemies in the game, or should I say other children? There's Soda Pop Blues, where you very easily connect pieces of piping together so you can move orange soda from one end to the other. And with a name like Soda Pop Blues, it would make more sense for the soda to just be blue. It'd be funny. But on the bright side, you know who loves orange soda? Kill! Soda. But hey, at least I get this 180p quality PNG of live action Josh staring at me the whole time. The passive aggressive judgment, I can literally feel it. Look at him being all like, oh yeah, you think you can connect those pipes? Good luck, bud. And the first pipe you literally connect is just a straight line. The back half of the game takes place at the movie theater where you continue the same gameplay and try to navigate through the problems Megan has caused. And now that you've made your way through the entire game, where your hardest challenges were time limits, paintball guns, and maybe a dude hitting you, you finally reach the end of the game. There's a talent show and Drake is set to perform, but uh-oh, Megan somehow ruined things and the rest of Drake's band isn't going to make it. Whatever shall we do? Well, with Drake being the guitar player and lead singer, the only logical thing to do is to get Josh on stage and sing as well. Of course. Oh, it's fine, don't worry. Apparently, they've been practicing some song together called Brothers Forever. But there's just one problem. Josh has stage fright, but Drake convinces him to go out on stage anyway. As we then get into our last minigame to end it all called Stage Fright. How fitting. The gameplay has you on stage in front of the crowd with Drake playing the guitar and Josh singing as you have to move Drake between two microphones on stage depending on the spotlight placement, collecting hearts from the crowd to keep your meter going up, and avoiding any food being thrown at you. You can even bounce some of that food right back. Yeah, how do you like those tomatoes? If things aren't going well and Josh gets stun locked from continuing to sing, it's time to head to the middle of the stage and perform a little solo by hitting the button shown on screen and Josh gets right back into it. Rinse and repeat until the performance is over with your meter filled up and that's the entire game. Helen shows up to say that you won the talent show and that the sheep have been let loose in the movie theater thanks to Megan as we cut to the credits of the random character sprites walking by. Mecha Dog here is my favorite, but don't tell Bod Sheep I said that. This girl is just named Hottie, this one's just named Smooches, and, and I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much- oh wait. <sighs> We aren't done yet, Drake. Right? At the end of the day, the game is functional as a game, but is far from what I would consider a fun time. Outside of a few things, you never feel that this is a Drake and Josh game. In fact, if you strip away Drake and Josh from it, and you start looking at the gameplay, the angle of the camera you play from, the puzzle solving, the collectible finding, and... Uh, ooh, wait a second. Oh. My. God. No, no, no. Th this can't be. The music in the sprite celebration when finding a collectible, the puzzles you solve, the camera angles. Oh no, it all makes sense now. This, this is just a very mediocre version of a Zelda game. I mean, minus the combat and all that, but the other core basics, it's all here. Well, now that we've had this little revelation, I think I need to sit down and relax with another game. <sighs> it only seems fitting that we come off a Drake and Josh game and lead into another, this time for the next Nintendo console, the DS. Let's hop into Drake and Josh Showcase and see what it's all about. I mean, it can't be more of the same or even worse, right? <laughs> Right? Only a few months later in the same year, we got Drake and Josh Talent Showcase. Yep, you heard that right. On July 30th, 2007, four months after the release of the GBA game, the DS game released, and it's also developed by the same group formerly known as A2M, and published by THQ. This was more of the setup where both were being made at the same time to take advantage of the player bases on both handheld consoles, but at least it's a somewhat different game from the previous one. It starts out the same, here's Drake. Here's Josh. And this time they have fully drawn bodies in these, I guess, cutscenes. At least they aren't just a floating head. And in the actual gameplay of the game itself, the characters have 3D models now. It's still from that semi-top-down perspective, but everything is enhanced from the power of the DS, meaning that there are two screens to play this game. You'll need them to truly showcase your talents, as there's a talent show coming up, and the winners that qualify get to perform in the Teen American Talent Show in Los Angeles on live TV. If you haven't noticed by now, I've been calling the game a talent showcase instead of talent showdown, as the talent that is showcased is my patient's 
to play through these games. And to see all the people that comment, um, actually, it's showdown, not showcase, before getting to this part as they didn't watch the video to this point yet. Totally meant to do this on purpose. This wasn't a fix for me writing it wrong in my script instead of just re-recording the lines over again. <laughs> I'd never do that. Anyway, Talent Showdown focuses on the brothers each wanting to perform in the talent show. Drake performing his music with his band and Josh performing his magic. So far, these things seem on brand. But then sabotage begins happening thanks to Travis, who wants to win the talent showdown for himself and wants to make sure you don't. So he starts by taking Drake's band members and hiding them around the school as you just find them alone in different areas. What a way to sabotage things there, Travis. You really got us good. Travis serves as the real bad guy you have to deal with and Megan, well, she's around and sometimes offers some help. And I'll get to more of that in a second, but as far as this, you know, that's on brand for her. As for the most part, she likes to be the only one doing the torturing of her brothers. So when duty calls, she's there. While you play on the top screen, the bottom screen serves as a few different features for you as you navigate through these areas to get these different objectives done. You get this nice little compass here that points you in the direction that you need to go, so you go that way as much as you can until you find exactly where it was leading you to. And the other options for you are... I don't know, his special abilities, his superpowers, whatever you want to call them. As with Josh, the first thing gives you a halo that goes around your head as you use it to show this proper and good behavior as you nonchalantly walk by enemies without aggroing them. And opposite that, Drake gets the ability to sprint way faster to move around, which is pretty solid, honestly. Josh's next ability is literally just pocket sand, just ready to toss it out and blind the enemies. While Drake's other ability is having a water gun that you can refill constantly at water fountains throughout the school as you super soak anyone that comes in your way. The final thing you can do for each character is either the special that Josh has that allows him to use his magic to pull a rabbit out of his hat, tracing certain patterns on the touchscreen to perform the magic, and then Drake just getting a nice fire extinguisher to mess with enemies. Power scaling wise, Drake clearly has a better loadout and since you have the ability to swap between the characters on the fly here, you'd probably find yourself playing as Drake more often to get through this game outside of using the compass feature, which is exclusive to Josh, so you'll still need to swap back here and there to get between the areas of the school and other locations that you'll need to go through. Up next, more Drake and Josh. Now here's more Drake and Josh. The gameplay loop is as repetitive as the first game. It's a lot of doing the same thing throughout. Make your way around this area, deal with enemies, get to objectives, collect trophies, get keys, open doors, and as a bonus, you even get to play as Megan sometimes for a few smaller missions. And she has arguably the best well-rounded loadout, getting Drake's abilities, minus the running, instead getting Josh's Halo slow walk, and then getting access to the compass. The locations themselves vary from just being the school, which is nice to see, and something that is nice is that the location does change here multiple times. So while you start out at the school, you're able to go to areas like a hotel or a Hollywood studio lot. But I don't want to spoil what happens just yet. I know you'd appreciate hearing the story out. As you start progressing through the objectives of getting keys to access more places to reunite all of the other band members, you get to have a little performance with the band as you use the touch screen in the way the DS was intended. Playing a worse version of Guitar Hero for the DS. Yeah, I know you remember this odd guitar contraption here. Yeah, good times. Yeah, good times. This performance brings you to the finals, and then you run around with Josh showing off your magic to finally impress them enough to be given the golden ticket to Hollywood as well. When you get there, this brings us to the hotel mission, as a notebook that contains both Josh's magic tricks and Drake's songs to perform is now gone. Josh also has this other rival side thing with a character named Jesse who claims is stealing his tricks, and so now when the notebook is missing, he claims that Travis and Jesse stole it, so now they must sneak around a hotel, break into rooms, get the notebook back as it is conveniently scattered scattered into pages all around the hotel, and you now need to go and collect them all. But once you do, it's time to perform another song as practice for the big show, as we're then brought to the studio lot for the live show. But Drake and Josh are lost and need to make it to the right area to perform on the show while avoiding fans, but not your fans, fans of the hit in-universe show Drew and Jerry. Which, wow, wait, I kind of love that reference from the show, and it clues us into how big that whole situation turned out for the look-alike replacements of one another. Regardless, you try and find a way off that set, you help an actress find her costume, you find some more keys, you end up on a kids show set and then a western set, you play a country song, and eventually you make it to the talent show set. But Travis has already performed and is causing some issues like emptying the hydraulic machines of water, and it's up to Drake and Josh to help the production crew to fill them back up, including fixing the generators. And you rinse and repeat this a few times as you sit there and wonder why you're playing mechanic instead of, mm, let me see, I don't know, doing literally anything else. Nah, 
don't call a professional to fix the problems. Have two teenage boys who have no clue what they're doing handle fixing this problem. Oh, they, they did fix them. You know, maybe if music and magic don't work out, they have a solid career to fall back on. But it's not as simple as finishing that up and going to perform. Drake and Josh Talent Showdown gives you what you've been waiting for all along in a Drake and Josh based game. And that's a boss fight with Travis. No joke, you have to face off against him with your arsenal of abilities and eventually defeat him. It's anticlimactic and y you just keep hitting him with, with your abilities until he eventually stays down and it says, hey, congratulations, you defeated Travis. But then now you have a time limit to make your way through this labyrinth of rooms and enemies to make it on stage or else you don't get to perform and you lose. But it's okay, you finally get there after all that's gone on and you get to now perform, baby. Well, first you do some magic as Josh, you know, that's the really fun part. You know, I love it so much. And this is what we've really been waiting for. Oh, finally, now that that's over with, it's time to rock out. Offering a final performance with Drake and his band, ending it with the theme song to Drake and Josh in the way that it was always meant to be heard as a complete pressed version of it coming out of the DS speakers. That's the real magic here. Somehow Drake and Josh both win, but at least you beat out Travis and Megan even compliments you, kind of. Then the credits roll. That's it, that's the game, thanks for playing. You move around areas, complete objectives, avoid attack or get attacked by enemies, who just kind of hold your arm as you tussle it away. And it's just all extremely easy. It's not a long game, just like the GBA one, and it feels more like a time waster than something that made me feel like my time was used correctly. The references and some of the character dialogue was decent, but really there is nothing here. Overall, both games suffer from being boring, at least for me, I'm not going to speak for you. They aren't challenging in any way, which isn't necessarily a problem, but when every other part of the game feels extremely lackluster, at least being somewhat difficult to get through would have made it more interesting. Regardless of playing it now as an adult or if I played it back then when I was a kid, I still would have felt the same way. I know that because I was one of the people who bought it for $5 at Five below, at least the first game. These little tie-in games never really have any focus on what source material they come from, but I will give the second game a bit of credit for having more references and some good callbacks for fans of the show. Outside of that, the game exists, and that's their greatest achievement. Wait, scratch that. The amount of sealed copies of the GBA game at five below across all of the locations could probably equal out to filling up the square footage of an entire five below store. And that is the true talent showcase showdown. Dang it, never mind. Anyway, what have we learned today? We answered the question if Drake and Josh was a good example of a sitcom being turned into a video game, where the answer is clearly no. But we also learned to have a little bit of fun playing less than stellar cash grabs. At least I had a few good laughs playing through the games and then making this video, and hopefully you got to experience why I have a therapist, and maybe had a couple of laughs yourself. Either way, I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.